Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the REC Podcast, brought to you by REC Comics and Collectibles. I'm your host, Roman Chavez, and with me as always... Eric Icarus. And today, today we have special guests. We have... Jordan Tenney. And... Dave Williams. They have been on uh, other roundtable discussions that we've had. We're happy to have them back with us. And uh, thanks for joining us, gentlemen. Really appreciate it. Uh, Today's kind of topic, why I've gathered you here... I want to talk about action movies. Um, With the release of John Wick 3, it got me feeling nostalgic for action films and, you know, what they represent to us, to society to an extent, and what we like, what we don't like, and maybe a few guilty pleasures along the way. Um, I guess right off the bat, what is an action movie to you, Dave? Uh, Thanks, Roman. I think it's a a very simple plot, good guy versus bad guy, Um, and... You know, lots of lots of action sequences where you have people fighting or killing uh, each other, and I, I think that makes for a good action flick. Um, you know, one of the best examples I give you is, instance, uh, Terminator. Right? Okay. It's not really heavy on dialogue, at least on Arnold's part. <laughs> on <the> Arnold's part. <laughs> right. <laughs> but it's very clear. You have a good guy, you have a bad guy, and it's a very simple story of you know the good guys having to overcome this obstacle of the Terminator and and saving saving humanity. I okay. Think it's simple. Simple. Big tuna. Yeah, I think uh, to me when I think of an action movie, um, I, I it it feels to me like an action movie is really something in which the action makes sense. You know, a movie where it's like whether it's the fighting, whether it's you know shooting or kung fu karate. You know, when it's something that incorporates the story into the action, and I think that's why um, a lot of action movies tend to be like you know war movies or westerns and these things. So when I think about you know, an action movie in general, um, it's usually one in which, uh, yeah, you do have that hero dynamic, that good guy, bad guy sort of thing. Uh, but then there's also kind of a, um, a logical sense to what's happening. You know, um, even though there's movies out there that just have mindless violence, I, I don't think I would classify them as an action movie, Hmm. uh, as weird as it sounds, you know, I, I think when we think of action movie, it tends to be like action movies have violence. I think there's a lot of maybe violent or gory movies that wouldn't fall under that action movie umbrella. Mm. Mm-hmm. Eric? I just kind of have to expound on both those points. Those are like really well said. Uh, yeah, it's just cut and dry cinema to me. It's yeah. bad. Good versus evil. Lots of explosions, lots of fighting, snappy dialogue. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, I like that. Quick one-liners. Uh, you know, for me, it's... I actually put a lot of thought in this, and not that you guys did not. I just... I, I, I was just like, man, what? I've been watching a few... What does it for me? And, like, honestly, for me, it's... I prefer more than one uh, protagonist. Uh, we do have some some great kind of solo movies like a Die Hard. However, there usually is somebody that John McClane is bouncing ideas off. But I've got to like the villain, too. I've got to, on a different day, be rooting for Hans Gruber. You know, to be to be curious and wondering what diplomatic immunity means to me okay, <laughs> and what I can do on sovereign soil. I got to like the villains or the villains, uh, like their, their, their right hand, something like that. I like, I like those things. I want, and I want action. I do want action that makes sense, but I also want action that it's like, dang, that could never happen. And it, but it makes me question that it could. John yeah. McClane dropping, uh, uh, you know, on that, what was that, that, uh, that jet, that like raptor in uh in Live Free or Die Hard. Oh yeah. You, you know, where he's like fighting on that, like that's never gonna happen. But damn it, it looked really good. Right. It yeah. looked really good. Uh but yeah, for me the the protagonist and the antagonist, I kinda have to root for them both at some point. You know? I love Hans Gruber. <laughs> um what for you guys, what is your kind of quintessential action movie? And Jordan, I wanna start with you because I feel like yours might be different than the rest. Yes. Uh well, really, any kind of musical. <laughs> <laughs> a susical or otherwise. Yes, the, the action is fought through the vocals. Uh, no, actually, for me, um, I'm a, I, I love movie series. Because I like okay. the idea that, um, you know, if it's a good movie, a good story, a good plot, sometimes it needs to be more than one movie. And uh, I don't know, for me, growing up watching, I've always loved the Lethal Weapon movies. Oh, yeah. Uh, Lethal Weapons, like, if I had to probably pick, like, a franchise where it's, like, an action movie franchise, I think I would I think I would jump immediately to the Lethal Weapon. And what I like about it, and you're right that, you know, sometimes, you know, these characters in action movies, they do things that are 
beyond human nature. Yeah. You know, they do the thing that, yeah, um, it's a million to one shot. But for the hero, it's that, that's the shot that <laughs> yeah. works, you know? Um, so I, I do totally get that. But in, in the Lethal Weapon movies, um, I, what I like about it is, even though there is that element of ridiculousness and, and silliness, um, there's also that idea that... Um, you know, if you probably count the number of punches thrown by Mel Gibson, he takes more than he throws. Yeah. You know, that idea that uh, kind of like with Indiana Jones, where it's, you know, more often than not, he's not very stylized in his action and fighting. It's kind of more of a, uh, he's getting, he's taking a lot of hits and punches. And I think that's what I like about the Lethal Weapon movies is that they, their characters are still human mm -hmm. and they're still able to, you know, accomplish these things and, you know, make that incredible shot or, you know, uh, um, do that thing that would just be pretty much impossible in real life, but at the same time, um, they're also you, you see the people behind them. Mm. Lethal Weapon boys, we all oh, we yeah. all love it. Yeah? yeah, yeah. Lethal Weapon is kind of my gold standard for action films, and especially and especially as a franchise because I like all four. If any Lethal Weapon is on, I will finish that Lethal Weapon. Whereas Die Hard Two, I could skip. I could skip. I could skip uh, a good. What was the last one? A good day to die hard. Never even oh, saw it. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. not good. Yeah. It's not good. It's, it's, a bad it's not. Day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a bad day for for for, for the McLean family. Um, yeah, I I think that's the gold standard for action movie, especially from the eighties. And I guess I should have prefaced this: we were all born in the eighties, so that's kind of our our uh, our starting point for action films. What about you, Eric? What is your what is your uh, quintessential? somebody's never heard of an action movie and you're like, you got to watch You X. know, I, I wouldn't say Die Hard, but that just seems like the go-to. So it would obviously be Die Hard, but if I was going to go maybe a little left of center, I'd say Shoot Him Up. Shoot Him Up? Okay. Yeah, with Clive Owen. That is like action movie dialed to 11. <laughs> like, because it's all ridiculous. Everything is ridiculous about that movie. Um, I remember reading an interview or watching an interview with the director and he was talking about how he wanted to make a action movie with Elmer Fudd and Bugs Bunny. And okay. He, yeah, he wa he wanted to make them basically cartoon characters who were shooting at each other. Jeez. I've never seen Shoot 'em Up. Oh, it's amazing. It really? It's so ridiculous. It's like easily in my top five action yeah. movies all time. It's up there with Demolition Man. Oh, I mean. man. I mean, <laughs> it's amazing that some of these other action movies, like Demolition Man, can comment on society, too. Yeah. Like that. That's kind of like the gold standard. For I, I, so. See, I don't even consider... Demolition Man transcends action movies. <laughs> That's, That's what I'm mean, saying. I love Demolition Man. It transcends it, man. <laughs> Dave? Uh, well, I was going to say <laughs> sort of the same thing. Die Hard is, is your sort of go-to... Mm -hmm. you know movie that you could point to and i i would also say you know pretty much 80s you know th into the 90s for me anyway sort of the, the golden era of action flicks mm -hmm. you can think of uh, arnold schwarzenegger bruce willis and uh sly you know um and i was actually going to say demolition man so i could come up with something a little bit different um but i got you know beat to the punch on that one <laughs> It's a it, it's a great film. I think that kind of epitomizes you know at least Sylvester Stallone uh -huh. you know in terms of action film flicks. And I I just I liked the villain. I yeah. thought Wesley Snipes was ridiculous. And Simon all Phoenix. That's right. Uh, you know, <laughs> and then you had uh, John Spartan, right? Yeah. <laughs> Sly. Uh, taking down the bad guy and, and doing so. Uh, yeah, a, 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 a guy so bad from the '90s that he gets. Frozen and thawed in what the the twenty thirty five or something like that twenty thirty six, and he's so bad and society has become so tame that they have to thaw John Spartan out of ice because nobody can handle Simon Phoenix. You need that nineties you know machismo machismo to fight. Yeah, great. And this is Simon Phoenix, you know, who's been programmed with weapons, uh, you know, expertise. And, yeah, and and uh, martial arts expertise as well. This is like a souped up. You know, yeah. Simon Phoenix, and of course, you know John Spartan. What what can he do? He can knit. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, no, it's a good movie, and I I'd say that's a good example of you know what I'm looking for in an action flick. Oh man, I, I and I couldn't agree with 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 those choices any anymore. It's it's pretty universal, especially amongst amongst males, especially in our age group, like those types of films. Um, it's I, I like that you brought up Terminator. I even have it in my show notes here. Terminator question mark. I was like, is Terminator an action movie? Um, I, you answered my question for me. It is more, because I, I was trying to stay away from like action comedies mm -hmm. and uh, sci-fi, because like, I was like, oh man, you know, uh, Alien and Alien, well, Aliens more than Alien, but I think th those for me are for another show. But 
Terminator is the most outside of that kind of genre where it is that science fiction action. But I mean, it does really revolve around you know Sarah Connor and uh, oh god, what's the what, what's the uh, John Connor? Not Kyle, John Connor. Kyle, Kyle, Kyle Reese. Kyle Reese. Kyle Reese. Yeah. What's his name? Kyle Connor? <laughs> um, you know, it's it's not really about Arnold. Like, that's the action element, but it's about those other two. And, yeah, it's it's so good. I, I, I didn't watch any Terminator this week, so now I need to. Um, of kind of this uh, renaissance, I, I would say that there has been something of a renaissance of action films in the last 10 years or so, but we've been getting a lot of older men as action stars you know your takens with liam neeson your john wicks and but then i was thinking about it even bruce willis was kind of old in in die hard you know at least like i felt like he was old you know uh uh in lethal weapon you know danny glover is, is a few days away from retirement you know he, he was getting too old for it <laughs> he was i mean he does it. It. you know it's you know, we've already had the, these older men, but I feel like this this new generation is kind of following suit with that. And I, you know, they're new, but they're they're old. What do you think that is? Why do you think that is? I well, I think it's because, you know, they're trying to maybe, demo, you know, our demographic. Are you like you said our age group? Yeah. So you know, you said we were watching Bruce Willis. He seemed older to you mm -hmm. back then. So maybe like, okay, well, let's throw a few more old dudes out there now, <laughs> yeah. for them. Because you know we're growing up now. Yeah. So we'll maybe recognize their style. You know that kind of action. So maybe that's why they're casting. You know, you know your Liam Neesons, your uh, Keanu Reeveses. You know, I don't. Yeah. Part of me, know. part of me wonders if it's like, uh, you know, it's hard. Maybe it's hard to get youth into action movies. But sure. they're like, hey, if we do an older guy so that when the, these guys are now the age, like we're the age of John McClane, and, you know, yeah. and, and so now we have something else to look forward to. Hey, our dance isn't over. Right. If our daughters get taken, you know, we yeah. can uh, we can go across the pond and we can go rescue I them can, ourselves. I Magoo with dyed soy sauce hair. Like, yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, like, when you were describing kind of that sort of older action hero that we've seen in the last, you know, 10 or 15 years or so, uh, the... I did. I first thought Liam Neeson, uh -huh. um, but then the second name that popped in my head was Denzel Washington. Oh, the movies yeah. like Equalizer, uh, Equalizer, Equalizer Two, <laughs> Equalize Harder. I don't know. What that's <laughs> Equalize, uh, Equalize this. Uh, yeah. uh, Man on Fire. Yeah. Like no, just you're right. truly, you know. And I wouldn't consider Denzel Washington to be an action star, but he's a movie star that does action. Ah, interesting. And so I wonder if it's almost like a way to. I don't want to say legitimize it, but like Denzel's an actor that can act well, yeah. and his action movies have been done well, you know, considering yeah. uh, they've been very successful. And so, uh, you know, maybe there is kind of that approach. You know, Bruce Willis was doing Moonlighting when he did Die Hard. Mm -hmm. You know, he was a household name; people knew him. Uh, you know, Liam Neeson, his career has spanned from the you know '80s, you know, all the way into the 2000s. And I think there, you know, maybe there is a little bit of an element where it's like, you know. Yes, you could get um, Channing Tatum to do an action movie, mm -hmm. um, but having the character, the the primary, the the protagonist, having them be an older, established actor, um, I think maybe does pull in. Uh, um, maybe a, a wider net. I don't know how many people in the 50s or so are wanting to watch the action movie with a Channing Tatum. Mm -hmm. Well, I, you know, this is an interesting question you brought up. I mean, I'm thinking about, you know, all, all those action stars from yesteryear, right? And mm -hmm. you, you see them all in The Expendables, obviously, right? Mm -hmm. That's another yeah. action flick to talk about. But I'm thinking about actors nowadays that, you know, you would consider just pure action stars, or at least that's how they you know, make their bread and butter. And the only one I'm racking my brain, the only one I can come up with is the rock. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, maybe that's, you know, part of what's going on here is that you don't have a, a, a big pool to draw on. And that's why you're bringing in these, these guys from the eighties and nineties to continue doing flicks and whatnot. Can we not, like you were saying to your points, can we not accept a younger person as an action star because we don't feel like they've been through anything or, are we looking at our fathers? I'm dead serious in these in these act in these action stars. Like, oh, my dad could do that too. Well, you know? I will say that <laughs> that my father in Denzel Washington, <laughs> <laughs> he was also a man on yeah, fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, that was yeah, it was a home improvement accident. But, <laughs> uh, but no, yeah, I do think you're right. There might be kind of a generational perspective on it mm-hmm. for sure. And uh, yeah, I, I do also think that maybe the the pool is a little bit um, drier for some of the younger audiences, and so the idea of pulling in some of these more established people, and in that you still have Bruce Willis doing action movies now over as you know thirty five or so years plus, um, that might explain why. Uh, you know, today's point, it is hard to think about somebody that's maybe on the younger side that does uh, predominantly action movies in this current uh, in this current time. I mean, you kind of have Jet Li, right? So he he's done many action flicks, right? Mm-hmm. J- Jason Statham, right? Yeah. So uh, you know, the, you know, so there's a few. Uh, but I both I, old though they're yeah, both, they're I both know. pretty they're, old they're still up there even late he, 40s now at he, least even The Rock right he's, yeah. he's oh, also yeah. good enough he's almost too. 50 I think right so I, I I don't know I mean I'm what are you guys saying what's the what's the younger act because we can look at the Marvel actors obviously right we're looking at the super yeah definitely I didn't I didn't want to bring superheroes into it because superhero movies are def, you know right. they just are right. action you know but I you know, I just wonder, and I'm kind of I'm thinking about it now. I'm thinking about somebody like Zac Efron, who just did that Netflix movie uh, about um, that ser- that serial yeah, killer, Ted, Ted Bundy. Bundy, and you know, it seems like a lot of these young actors and actresses, or just actors in general, they really man like they're shooting for that Oscar early. It's like, hey, I gotta I gotta get in there. I've got to be taken seriously because I was on the Disney Channel or I was a a failed singer or something like that, and they're really. Like they're, I mean, Zac Efron's done a lot of serious roles, and that guy is funny. He is charming, and I could take him in in a lot of other roles. Uh, but it's it's weird. It, it seems like they're trying to act older than their age, and then our action stars are trying to act younger than their age in these movies. It's very it's very strange, and I've never really thought about it in this way. Um, I don't know what, what I don't know what that means. Uh, it doesn't change the films for me. Can we can we all agree that me you know maybe some of these people have gone through a midlife crisis and maybe in their acting careers are going through what we call an end your life crisis oh, where now geez. they're now they're doing all these films focused on action I don't know but yeah maybe it is kind of a way to sort of um I don't want to say stay relevant but yeah, yeah I mean uh, I I don't you know I I think Liam Neeson in a, in a right role could could win an Oscar yeah. But he's also done the commuter, and he's done uh, he did, nonstop. Yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah, he did not stop. He did uh, uh, Mr. Plow. <laughs> so um, yeah, so I, maybe it is kind of a. Uh, and some of those people, they didn't. You know, some of them, like Liam Neeson and Denzel Washington, didn't really make a name for themselves doing action movies before, and now they've established their careers, and so maybe now they're feeling like. Um, they want to pursue some of these other projects and like you were saying maybe these younger actors maybe it's kind of flipped Mm -hmm. and maybe that's why they're now pursuing these more serious dramatic roles um, because maybe they feel like if they're the young face doing the action films that they're going to get typecast not taken seriously and they're going to miss out on other projects that they may that may pass and never loop back to them again yeah and you know and somebody like a Zac Efron is going to be in great shape later on in life and then can do the action movie then, mm-hmm. you know? Uh, it'll be interesting if, like, they don't do a Fantastic Four movie for, like, ten years and then, like, Zac Efron's kind of, like, old enough to kind of be a Reed Richards <laughs> instead of a human sort. <laughs> um, you know, there's... What about women in action? I, as I was kind of compiling this list of, of things I wanted to discuss, I met something of a loss when it comes to, to female action movies... That I enjoy or, you know, that I'll even go watch. Um, are there any female action uh, movies that you guys, like, hey, like, you got to watch this. So-and-so was, was pretty awesome. Eric? Uh, I like the Tomic Blonde. Okay. I thought that was really good. Yeah? Um, I know we talked about that. I, you didn't care for it. I did not care for it. It really wasn't for me. I didn't yeah. believe uh, Charlize Theron as that character. Right. I did. I think she uh, played it really well. You know, uh, I love that stairwell fight mm-hmm. scene, you know. Yeah. Done really well. I thought she carried the movie. The problem was the plot was just super, the, super convoluted. Yeah, that the was plot, the problem with that. The plot didn't do much for but, me. Um, I thought she did, I thought she was great in that. Okay. You know? um, as far as, like, leading action women concerned, she's up there for me. She's better than Ronda Rousey and... Yeah. 
that one chick from Fast and Furious. I always forget. Oh, her name. Michelle Rodriguez. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's this. There's this panel at Comic Con uh, that they force you to watch, and it's called. Uh, oh God, what's it called? Women who kick. Um, you can say kick it. Yeah, yeah you can say it. I will. Well, women who kick ass. Yeah. I will. <laughs> and, it, and it and it was. Uh, it's it's female action uh, stars and. It should be very interesting and very eye-opening, and it tends Ooh. out to be just kind of a gripe session about how they're not taken seriously right, right. as actors in the in the field. And it, it kind of, you know, like Mila Jovovich, ugh, she does nothing for right. her as yeah. an action star. Yeah. But they keep giving her these roles. Well, her, her husband's the director. And that's true. So, that's true. I mean, that's, that's kind of a shoe I'm, right just, I'm just I'm just not a fan of hers, and, and I'm not a fan of her movies. Um, well... I mean, I'll I'll admit it. I, I think it's tough for women to be the leads in, uh-huh. a, in action flicks. And yeah. I, I you know I don't want to take anything away from actresses that do you know good good work, uh, but I think that's just objectively the case. I mean, I I had a tough time thinking of action flicks when the when you brought up the question, mm-hmm. so I had to bring out my phone and see. Okay, <laughs> wait, a minute, I'm sure I've seen something, right? And you know, obviously, uh, Underworld. Right? Oh yeah. I thought that was that yeah. was fine. I, I I that's that's a good series, and I think you know she did. Kate Beckinsale did a, a great job, you know, leading uh, in that one. Um, you look at film. Haywire was good. Yeah, there was that. There was uh, no one. I, I like the action in it. Oh okay. yeah. I don't I don't know if you could count wanted. I mean, Angelina Jolie was was a a lead in that but yeah. um, you know even then that w- there was still some things going on there with other actors uh, mm-hmm. being a part of the plot and then Kill Bill Kill Bill I thought that Definitely. was you know, you know yeah. I'd put that right there as well, well. We said, but would we classify that as action or is that more like a kung fu flick martial arts movie yeah, I think it's in the same vein that even Underworld is probably a, it's a vampire movie okay. but it's still it's still got some action in it so I'll take that Jordan you, you were you were into Kill Bill yeah, yeah. Well, and and I was thinking, you know, kind of in the background while we were having the conversation about like, um, you know, well, what about like a martial arts movie, yeah. you know, sort of thing where you know, it, it, but once again, the story is really being driven through the action, mm-hmm. and so I, you know, I, I I do think it would count, but um, yeah, I I do think that one of the things that's hard, um, especially for female actresses, is. Um, well, they're just not as good as men. Obviously. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's just. Like, just <laughs> well, I, I think that I think that many uh, many actresses um, lead projects that primarily skew towards women, mm-hmm. and yes, there are women that enjoy action movies and yeah. stuff yeah. and have a diverse interest in film for sure. But um, I think sometimes uh, when it you know kind of cuts against the grain, um, it can be hard to get into that market that is extremely heavily male dominated. Uh, When you not only look at who the leads are, when you look at the audience demographics as well. Um, And so, yeah, I I do think that there's uh, definitely some of those, uh, you know, those things that pop up. But um, yeah, I I think that over time, Mm -hmm. I think as, you know, demographics shift and change, uh, that maybe we'll see more mainstream projects that are female led, that are, you know action films but uh but yeah it is i mean you, it's it does seem few and far between going back all the way into like the 70s and 80s oh, it yeah. was pretty i mean to me like to think of like you know an, an older female-led action film i think of like la femme nikita or something oh, where it's like you know but then uh, but you know a lot of times the women in action movies are the damsel in distress mm-hmm. or they're the person that is uh, you know instrumental in the training for the mission, but then the man goes on the mission, or so, you know, like I mean, then we got our Ripley's and then our Sarah Connors. Sure, absolutely, you know? yeah, absolutely, yeah. and that's and that that is very true that um, there have been those strong female you know uh, opportunities where like you look at all the Alien movies, uh-huh. you know, it was it was Ellen Ripley, mm-hmm. and then in the ones that don't have Sigourney Weaver, you have uh, two female leads in both. Uh, Alien Covenant, and then Prometheus, and then in yeah. Prometheus. Yeah. So it's a, so you know, and it's not to say that I don't I don't know if they were explicitly written for a female lead, but um, I I'm sure that any road of success that these female action stars have had was paved by people like Sigourney Weaver. Oh, definitely. Oh and yeah. I, and I'm gonna blow you guys' mind. I've got I've got three 
female action movies that I absolutely love. When they're on, I watch them just like I would watch a Lethal Weapon. One of them, because I went, Dave, I went I went kind of your route and th- was thinking Angelina Jolie initially. But I don't like the Tomb Raider movies. I think they're garbage. They're just not any good. Um, Gone in 60 Seconds, more car heist movie, but pretty awesome. But she's not really the lead. But in Salt... Did you guys ever see yeah, Salt? Yeah, Salt was all right. Was, I really you know. enjoyed Salt. It was a Manchurian candidate feel. It was really hard hitting action. I believed, uh, I believed her fight. character. <laughs> I believed that she could fight. I really could. Whereas I just wasn't sold by Charlize Theron in in that. Uh, See, oh, I, I don't know. I don't know what it was. Like the action was yeah, good. I, I, I thought she was more believable than Angelina in Salt. Fair enough. Yeah, fair I, enough. Weird. I don't know, man. And then huh. the other two. Guys, both Charlie's Angels movies are oh, awesome. They are full throttle, and they are they are so good. And the villains in Charlie's Angels. That's uh, oh god, Crispin Glover. Thank you, Crispin Glover, mm-hmm. and um, uh, from Gentleman Broncos, um, uh, Sam Rockwell. Sam Rockwell. Yeah, Sam Rockwell. Sam Rockwell in the first movie. Yeah. Oh my dude, that that's the first time I ever saw Sam Rockwell. And I was like, this guy is awesome, and I hope I get to see him in more things. I will not I will not discount some of the over the top ridiculous action in Charlie's Angels. <laughs> but not but you know, this might cut against the sexist screen. But I think the best thing about those three female led Charlie's Angels movies uh, was Bosley in them. So <laughs> both Bosleys are really are really good. I mean Bill Murray, Bill Murray yeah. and uh, Bernie Mac, mm-hmm. God rest his soul, right? You know, I liked them both. Um, but they're definitely the salt and pepper <laughs> to the to the Charlie's Angels steak. Okay, um, the I I liked all three ladies. I felt like with uh, uh, with the exception of Drew Barrymore, uh, Lucy Liu, and oh my god, Cameron, Diaz. Cameron Diaz, they were they were playing characters that they don't normally play. Yeah. And, you know, I can totally see Drew Barrymore being that kind of, like, tough, you know, biker, you know, punk rock, metal chick or whatever. But, like, I believed there could be these kind of, like, different uh, characters that Diaz and Lucy Liu played. And I love, I, I enjoy both movies. When I can, I watch them back to back, guys. Well, you're getting another say. one soon, so. I did not hear that. Yes, yeah. They're Same doing cast? A, it's, it's a, no, it's an all-new uh, cast. Kristen Stewart's one of the three. I believe Naomi Scott, maybe, the, um, who's playing Jasmine in Aladdin. I think she's yeah. a part of it. And, um, yeah, and then female Bosley, too. Um, well, so, yeah. I'd Maybe rather have less than yeah. Ghostbusters. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. you know, it just, get, get, where, where's my all boy That's what I was saying. Let's do that, dude. Yeah. I, I don't know. But what do you guys think of, of, the, of Charlie's Angels? Honestly, you hear the silence. Yes, it's okay. it's definite. I watch it with my wife when she wants to watch it. <laughs> uh, so I have like a love hate thing with Mick G, who directed it. <laughs> uh, but uh, I have an I, all love with Mick G. Okay. To be to be honest, though, like sometimes when uh, sometimes when you like watch an action movie, I'm like like oh like that would be so awesome to do in real life. Yeah. And then I watch the Charlie's Angel stuff, and I'm like. I feel like I'm in the Matrix, like yeah. where it just feels like this this universe where very little seems to make sense, <laughs> be logical, um, and uh, and yeah, it just seems like it, my problem with the Charlie's Angels movies, and this might sound kind of petty, it seems like so much goes their way, uh-huh. where it's like. Uh, like Drew Barrymore's like, oh, we have to get into this bank vault, and like, and then they come up with three ridiculous disguises, looking like female village people, and they're somehow then able to get into this vault. And it's like, obviously, it plays on kind of the shtick that they did on the TV show, um, but uh, yeah, I mean, but you're right, like there is. Um, they, they have like some like weirdly standout characters yeah. and like and it's it's one of those things where there's a point where a movie can be over the top and it's ridiculous but then if you can go higher than over the top <laughs> you reach like a really different yeah. I, I, I don't even know what it, would, what it would be it's almost like a different genre damn straight <laughs> All right. Charlie's Angels look guys I feel like I'm I'm, I'm, I'm by myself and that's fine but you guys are wrong um, <laughs> I guess in that vein there, there are great action movies, guys. What are some like guilty pleasures? Some action movies that you like that it's hard for even your best friends to watch them with you. Eric? <laughs> uh, man. We can come back to you if you want to think. I, I, Universal Soldier is pretty bad. Oh, God, yeah, it I mean, is. A lot of those Van Damme movies are pretty, pretty bad. Yeah, Lionheart, right. I love Lionheart. Yeah. Uh, I haven't yeah. watched... 
a Van Damme movie more than once. I don't think. Yeah, ever. but I think this is cross, crossing into martial arts. Still, yeah, right? yeah. Maybe stick with the. But that's still kind of sci-fi too, right? Yeah, it's still, it's yeah, a little it's sci-fi. We can oh, come back to yeah. you. What about you, Tuna? You got something in mind? I sure do. All right. Yeah. yeah. Um, Roadhouse. I was gonna say I, if you say McGruber. I, I yeah, <laughs> McGruber. Yeah, McGruber. If we do a roundtable on like cinematic masterpieces, like, uh, like Oscar snubs. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. Roadhouse. Roadhouse. Like definitely. honestly, if I ever see it on, I'll watch it. And if it's not on, it's like on Amazon, and I can pull it right up. Like that is just one of those movies where um, it's just yeah, it's just so ridiculous. But I mean, uh, you got Patrick Swayze, you have Swayze. Sam Elliott, who has not aged since Roadhouse. Yeah. So something happened there. Uh, ben Garza, who is also in The Big Lebowski, plays the villain, and it's like this guy is this. He's this uh, big. He's this like big. I don't know. He's like a crime boss in a small town in like Missouri, and I don't know, like. <laughs> You know, I don't, I don't get it, but uh, but you've got multiple roundhouse kicks, great one-liners. Yeah, um, I'm pretty sure that's the second movie that same year that Patrick Swayze seduced a woman to the song "These Arms of Mine" in. The other one, I think, being "Dirty Dancing" that came out like wow. that year or year before. So he's kind of got a type, but uh, he's got he's got one move. Yeah, uh, but um, a roundhouse uh, kick. In, and, yeah, it's a roundhouse boots. kick. And he rips a guy's throat out. Oh, which, God. Like, honestly... Things. Mr. McGruber. Yeah, I was going to say, and the only other movie I've seen a throat rip in is McGruber, so... Ah, uh, yes, I love it. I love it. Yeah, I got I got three for you. Oh, um, my God. Yeah, I know, right? So, uh, you, obviously, you guys have seen Under Siege, right? <laughs> yeah. But a lot of people have not seen Under Siege 2, Dark Territory. I've never seen it. That is... <laughs> Jordan's laughing. That is a god awful uh, movie, but I enjoy it for. Some Does reason. a Baywatch babe come out of a cake in that one? No, that's in the first one. Well, if that, it's not in the second it's one. It's, it's, on a, it's on a train, bro. <laughs> yeah, and this is like Steven Seagal. He, he's even fatter ah, than he was in the. He first. ate the cake. <laughs> <laughs> he ate his way out of the cake. Um, and then uh, Soldier, uh, right? Uh, with yes. um, Kurt Russell. Kurt Russell, oh, right. yeah. Uh, that was that was a good one uh, that I, I for some reason I have to watch it yeah. when it's on there and then Jordan would appreciate. I'm going this. to kill them, sir. And then um, Jordan will appreciate this one. It's uh, kind of a comedy that's making fun of action. It's called Last Action Hero with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I know it's it it was panned by the critics. No one really. Likes it, but I don't really care for it. it. Yeah, it's not well, for me. it has it has a great villain. Yeah, it does. <laughs> so I, uh... It's like kombucha, you know, like <laughs> uh, like like uh, it's it's got a lot going, and if you if you let it sit too long, it becomes, <laughs> it becomes unflavorful. But uh, but yeah, it plays a lot on the action hero motifs, though. Yeah. Um... I love Tango and Cash. Oh yeah. Uh, Tango and Cash. If I you know I told you guys I want to watch all of the Lethal Weapons back to back. And if I had anything left in me, I would start taking on cash right after it. <laughs> Stallone, Kurt Russell, I mean, the prison escape scene. Uh, it is, it's just, it's so fun. For some reason, Stallone's got a scope on his handgun. And it, it's just like, it's the most ridiculous movie, and it's great. It's got, no, and Terry Hatcher's in it. She drums and is a stripper or something. And do you remember the villain? Uh, Jack J- Palance. That's right. It yeah, is curly. Jack Palance. There yeah. it is. See? It's, it's, it's great up and down. And then, have you guys ever seen The Big Hit? Oh. Big that Hit. That sounds familiar. Mark Wahlberg. Lou Diamond Phillips. Uh, Antonio Sabato Jr. Uh, wow, wow. You are digging your hole right now. Cisco from Deep Space Nine. <laughs> it is... It is terrible. Like, Mark Wahlberg has never... Like, this is, like, maybe his first movie. I don't know. It's bad, but it's about this group of hitmen, and they're kind of friends, and Mark Wahlberg is, plays this guy, Melvin Smiley, and he's, like, a super nice hitman. Like, he feels guilty about things. He doesn't like confrontation, and so he has a he has two fiancés, and, like, because he can't bring up the courage to break it off of them, so he, like, makes all this money as a hitman, but, like, doesn't have anything to show for it because he's, like afraid of women and is like paying for their like lifestyles it's ridiculous it's excellent I will send it home with you tonight <laughs> Eric did you I'm did not you top it any yeah, you can't top any of that oh my gosh um, yeah but Tango and Cash big hit just excellent excellent movies um, of this kind of new genre of action films what are you guys liking of uh, The Equalizer John Wick stuff like that are you liking all of them you 
Well, I definitely have to say John Wick is John Wick some, of the, some of the best. I think recent action films that you've seen, obviously, you know, Taken when that came out, that was that was really good. You're only Taken one, Taken two, uh, yeah, Electric I, Boogaloo, and Taken <laughs> three, <laughs> terrible. Okay, I have, to, <laughs> yeah. I'd have to agree. The first Taken was the best out of all, and um, and it, it is. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's since Batman Begins. I have a soft spot for Liam Neeson oh, doing lovely. action. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'd say John Wick, Taken, those are some of the good ones. You know, it's hard to separate some of the superhero stuff out of, out of out of this. But you're getting back to the women aspect of it. Um, you know, Wonder Woman. I thought that was a great, great flick. It's a comic book movie, Dave. Let's stay on top. I know, okay? I know. But I, I, I just want to say, I think as time progresses, I think it's a really superhero comic book movies are a great way to ease you know more female leads yeah. into action flicks yeah. and you're gonna have, you're gonna you know see another Wonder Woman come out you're gonna see a Black Widow uh, prequel come out uh -huh. and I think that's gonna help you know pave the way for for uh, more action flicks with women and um, you know I but I, I want to get back to it I think the 80s and 90s were the time where mm -hmm. we had really good over the top fun action flicks and I don't know if we're seeing too many fun action flicks anymore the one I think I would, I would point to is maybe Mission Impossible. That Mission Impossible was, was what I was going to talk about. <laughs> With the exception of two, the rest of them are all excellent sure. movies. Sure. I love Which is them. funny because two was directed by John Woo, who's done some of the most fantastic <laughs> yeah. movies. Yeah. And it's so bad. It I is. don't know if you remember Mission Impossible 2, but oh, it, is, yeah. I, it is so hard to watch. I can't forget. <laughs> Yeah, and like I don't know if if uh, Tom Cruise has braces in the in the movie or if they like digitally removed it. He just looks really weird in that one. He looks super weird in it. Cool action in some parts. That end motorbike fight is awesome, um, but the rest of the movie is just not any good. Well, Tom Cruise is pretty good, you know, apart even from Mission Impossible. Like Jack Reacher, I believe. I, I yeah. liked part one. Yeah. I, I didn't, didn't like. I don't like the movies, but the action is great right. in them. Yeah, yeah, they're. Uh, uh, give me, give me all the Charlie's Angels against them. <laughs> give me the the '70s show Charlie's Angels. I do not like the Jack Reacher films. <laughs> um, yeah, like just kind of thinking a tune, kind of circling a little bit back to kind of that whole like female presence in action movies thing. Um, one of my, and I would say that um, it's in my opinion, this movie's the single best action comedy because it does action fantastic and comedy fantastic is True Lies. Oh my god. And yeah, I mean it's just like Arnold Schwarzenegger. It's I think it's Schwarzenegger. Movie. I think it's my favorite Schwarzenegger movie. Uh it's it's I mean Jamie Lee Curtis is outstanding in yeah. it. Uh Charlton Heston has <laughs> like Nick Fury. Proto Nick Fury. <laughs> yeah. Um like it's just I mean it's it's hilarious. It's but it's you know Bill Paxton is great in mm -hmm. it with his little role. Uh but it's one of those movies Tom where it's like Arnold. It's David? Tom Arnold. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, like, you can just keep going. Uh, Tia Carrere, right? Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Um, but, like, it's the kind of action movie where the, the guys going in for the action are going to be satisfied. They're going to enjoy it. Yeah. And the, the, the women that want to go in and the, the comedy and the, the you know, that, that kind of stuff, if that's what they like or if they like the action, it feels like it's kind of like um, something for everybody. So I love True Lies. Um Thinking about the more recent ones, I love the John Wick movies. Like yeah. I, um, I, I like never watch movies by myself. My wife has like no interest in John Wick, so that might be a the number three might be a movie that I go watch by myself yeah. just because I'm that excited about it. But one of the things I like about the John Wick movies is that Keanu was super devoted to doing the training, the background stuff. Um, the the live fire stuff like they I know yeah. for the the second one they like set up like courses where they would stage the scene um, uh, not on set but he would essentially do live fire practicing what it was like and then they would go to the set and film I mean so there's all these YouTube videos you search like John Wick training and you'll see him training with Terran Tactical you'll see him doing just different um, stuff and he was like super committed to it yeah. he does like a he does like a three gun round with like a handgun shotgun and rifle and he's doing it at like a professional shootist level just super incredible stuff and it just adds like another layer to the ridiculous gunfighting in the John Wick <laughs> but to know like that they're they're going through the steps of taking it seriously I think makes it more enjoyable the, uh, the new John Wick without spoiling anything uh, has a lot more hand to hand fighting, which mm. I really love. A lot more hand to hand and knife. Mm. So I'm, I'm glad to get more of that because yeah. I, I do enjoy the gunfighting, but I was getting a little bored of that in number two. Yeah. And this one has, you, you almost like somebody might get bored of all of the hand fighting that's in this one. <laughs> it's so much. What about Olympus has fallen, London has fallen. 
I feel like John McClane could Angel be Angel has guys. fallen is now the next one. I saw the trailer for it. I'm not as interested in that one, but I will watch it because I do like uh, Mike Bannon. I think Mike Bannon's a very cool action hero. And honestly, you could put John McClane in that role and it would still work. <laughs> I do think that out of all of the things that Gerard Butler butchers in those movies, uh, his English accent is by far the... Uh, no, his American voice, yeah. But uh, yeah, those are those are also a, a, a lot of fun with the over the top part, but different stories in each one. Part you know? one, part one was great. Yeah. It was it was London that uh, has fallen. That was kind of just like oh, okay, this I, is just. It's not as good as one, but I really yeah. enjoy it. But they killed my goddess Angela Bassett. I'm so mad. <laughs> yeah, man, I forgot about Gerard Butler. He he does action too from time to time. <laughs> <laughs> right. There was a time. Isn't he in Sh- shoot him up? No. No, no, it's Clive Owen. Owen. Oh, Clive Owen, yeah, sorry. He's the other one. <laughs> yeah, the diet Gerard Butler's part of Wasn't, it, yeah. wasn't his first like action flick? Wasn't it uh, 300? Three hundred? Three. It wasn't his first. He was in uh, one of the Tomb Raiders. He was I in think. the second but, Tomb Raider. Oh, right. But I do yeah. think the that Dracula is... Dracula 2000? Yeah, it was, <laughs> it was really... I think 300, 300 was really that made him... Um, much more of like a, a household name, name you know yeah. you know women were obviously super attracted to everybody in there all the men were obviously super attracted to all the men in there just didn't know how to handle it <laughs> that's, well, that's, that's actually hit, historically accurate to the Greeks <laughs> very, so. very much so very much so why do you think action movies hold up like why can I still turn on Die Hard and I cannot stop Die Hard till it's done well, partly because we grew up on that stuff, right? So there's a bit of nostalgia. Yeah, but did your dad make you watch Die Hard? My dad didn't make me no, watch Die Hard. No, no. In, in fact, <laughs> I, I guess they they would, you know, back then they wouldn't want you to watch that kind mm-hmm. of stuff because there were, you know, not only violent things going on, but also language. But no, I, that's a fair point. Yeah. That's a very fair point. But I did watch it when I was growing up. Same here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, it's not like I saw it when I was 25 or something. I, I did Man, watch it. Could you it. imagine? And seeing Die Hard, and there are, you're already a man. <laughs> <laughs> and there, and there are, you know, kids growing up nowadays that haven't even seen it. They've heard about it, but they don't even know uh, some of the best things about Die Hard or, again, some of these other movies that we we know and love from the '80s and '90s. And I, I think a part of it is uh, that inherently we we like stories where it involves good guys versus bad guys, yeah. where there's a clear you know, mission to overcome some sort of uh, evil or immoral obstacle, and we and our we view ourselves, uh, you know, with that protagonist, that good guy. We want to be that good guy, sure, right? But we also want to kill people but, in the in the in name that, of being a good in that guy. scenario, right? <laughs> and that, I think that's one of the best things about getting back to Die Hard. That was just an you know he, he was a cop, right? Oh. But he was an average average guy who was put into a situation involving you know terrorists, and he was able to figure it out and make it make it happen and save the day and I think at the end of the day if we're if we find ourselves in some sort of a god forbid terrorist action uh, takeover of uh, some skyscraper I hope we probably would think once or twice maybe maybe we could do with John McCain or John um, not, not <laughs> John, John McCain, McCain. Yeah. get, get uh, captured <laughs> yeah. that is an action hero <laughs> you know um, it's funny though because uh, we talk so much about Die Hard but I've Always, always love Die Hard with a Vengeance more than all the others. Oh yeah, sure. like, it's always one. been my favorite. It's my favorite, one. And, and maybe it's because like it's John McClane and his elements in his city. Um, you know, it's in his backyard. Yeah, and, you're right. Um, no, you're I, right. I, I like the dynamic with him and Samuel L. Jackson that they like don't get along, that they fight, they argue, that sort of thing. Um, also, you know, with the first Die Hard, with the you know the front with the terrorist thing and what they're hiding and stuff, uh, it kind of similar, looping back to what they do in the third Die Hard, where it's you know this you know we have this action happening, but really there's something else behind the scenes. Um, it's just yeah, it's a fun movie. I think Dave's absolutely right. It's approachable. It's cross generational. It's that good versus bad struggle. Uh, you know, violence is weirdly, you know, something that transcends all culture, uh, you know, to an extent. Um, and so, you know, action movies that, you know, highlight these heroes that do these incredible things. And uh, I, I think it's it's just it, we, we are retelling that same story in different ways. Yeah. What about you, Eric? Well, why do they keep resonating with us today? Yeah. It's hard to it's hard to top those points. It's like I mean, because I don't need you to I mean, top we, it. We always like I mean I don't want to say the same thing because that's you know it it breaks down to you know why we like action movies and that's exactly why you know it's vicariously living through those characters you know doing those things. Uh, I mean I, I don't want my daughter to be taken, but like if she is, like I feel like I'm gonna yeah. be able to find her. You know, yeah. which is like maybe, the right phone maybe call. Maybe you should be taken. <laughs> and then she'll step up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there we go. Let, let's flip it. Let's yeah. flip it on its head. Let's flip it on its head. You know, I I, I do. Agree 
agree with Eric there. You guys really summed it up, why it works with us, um, and you know why they'll continue to, I think, continue to work with us. It'll be interesting when we're at a certain age where we can't identify with the old action star. We're like... Oh, these young kids in their action movies, you know, we're, we're, we're not going to be able to believe what they have going on. Guys, I really want to uh, say thank you for, for joining us today. I was uh, very excited to have this conversation, and, uh, and, and it was awesome. That is our show. Uh, thank you for tuning in to the REC podcast. Please uh, check us out on Instagram, at uh, REC Comics. Uh, if you like what we're doing, hit that subscribe button. Give us a like. Um, I have been your host, Roman Chavez. Oh, Eric Icarus. Jordan Tenney. And Dave Williams. Guys, thanks for joining us.